Now let me start our cool feature session with an oldie but a goodie, extended Varchar 2. And the reason why we included this here, even though the feature is a decade old already, is that not everything is mentioned in the documentation. So extended Varchar 2, the idea is that you can store more than the typical 4,000 byte in a Varchar 2 field or an nVarchar 2. So with that feature, it fits up to 32K. The requirements, you have to be on Oracle 12.1, you have to, or newer, of course, <laughs> and you have to set compatible to 12.1.0 or newer or higher. And then you can turn on this feature explicitly. So it's nothing which comes just there because you create a new database, at least not until 19C. And when you are on the Oracle Cloud, just as a side note here, in Autonomous, for instance, that is on by default, which is very convenient, actually. I haven't checked the other cloud deployments, but I can just sense that it's there on as well. And it's quite useful. When you turn this on, it's irreversible. So you have this now in your database and uh, can't turn this off. The parameter controlling it is max string size. By default, it's set to standard. And when you change it to extended, you can enable that feature. But only changing the parameter is not the way how to enable that feature. Very important if you use multi-tenant, which a lot of you do already, you can enable this on a PDB level, which is, I think, very, very important to know because enabling that feature requires a restart in upgrade mode. And it's much easier to restart a single PDB in upgrade mode than the entire CDB with all your PDBs. So let us dig into that and see what we have to do in order to be able to use that feature. And we start with a parameter change. So we set mux string size to extended, just in the SP file, because we need to shut down the database and then start it up, very important, in upgrade mode. And then we can execute the script UTL32K, which is an RDBMS admin. And that script explicitly checks for compatible to be at least 12.0 or higher. And it checks also that the database is started in upgrade mode. Once the script has completed, which usually takes just maybe 20 seconds or something like that, then we shut on immediate, we start up again in regular mode, and the same would apply to a single PDB, of course. And now I can create objects like this table here, applicants, where you see the last column called CV is now a Varchar 2 of 32,767 byte which is the maximum for this data type. Looks great, is extremely helpful, no doubt, but there are a few things to mention and to take care of. And I would call this the fine print, the things which are not in the documentation or at least not obvious in the documentation. And the first thing is something I think Ludovico Caldara blocked about this at first. Uh, he wanted to tr find out how many bytes can I really insert and what happens to the data. So when you create a new table, like the table I created on a slide before with the CV column, until I insert up to 3,964 bytes into that column or in a field in that column, it's still stored as a regular varchar too. No change and no lob segment allocated. Just if I go above that limit, then now the database, data, not the database, the data will be stored in an inline secure file lob. This is important to understand and it's not exactly 4,000. If you want to lower that threshold, you can set Scala type lob storage threshold uh, to a value lower than 4,000. Higher doesn't make sense, so I haven't tried that. But then you can like trigger the migration into an inline secure file lock earlier if you need to. If you do this now for an existing table, so you adjust with an alter table statement, the column length from, let's say it was a Varchar 2 4,000, and now you extend it to Varchar 2 9,000. That is very important to understand what happens here because it won't migrate 
into an inline secure file lab at this point. It will just do row chaining. So be very aware of that because that could be really impacting in terms of performance. So if you want the same behaviors for a new table, then you have to rebuild the object, either with DBMS redefinition or with online table move, a feature we will talk later about. Another thing we need to discuss here is performance. And Frank Pachot from DBI Services blocked about this a long while ago. And Frank found out that the number of round trips is much, much lower when we use the extended varchar 2 compared to traditional CLOP data. So what I do here in this example, I have one table with only one column where my data is in a CLOP, and I have the same table, but now not with a CLOP column, but with an extended varchar of length 9,000, storing just 10 rows in each of them and doing a select star. You'll see on the left side, I have 52 round trips, on the right side, only two round trips. So you need to consider this and try it out, of course, but it could be really beneficial and get you better performance, even though a bit more data is sent over the SQL net connection, but less round trips. Um, could be good, try it out. This is a often positive aspect of the extended Varchar 2 types. And the final thing, I would like to mention in that case something which is not obvious in the documentation, I guess. There's also a potential pitfall, and we just came across this in upgrades recently. When we store data, and this applies not only to extended varchar, but here it becomes really important, um, we have a potential pitfall. And a potential pitfall means that we need at least 16 blocks in an extend, 16 Oracle blocks in an extend until compatible is 18C or lower. And beginning with 19C compatible, we need 32 blocks in an extend to be able to create a secure file up. Otherwise, that will fail. So this means a simple example to demonstrate that. I have a database with DB block size 16K and there are a lot of databases with 16K or even bigger block sizes out there. Now I create a table space and I notice from some uh, customer projects as well, the uniform size hasn't been set too high. But be very, very careful with very low settings because here in my example, I set it to only 128K. And that means every extent contains eight Oracle blocks. And with eight Oracle blocks in one extent, I can't create a secure file up. And so I can't create also a varchar to extended column in that. It may sound a bit artificial, but as we've seen this now in two customer cases with upgrades, uh, I would like to recommend you to pay attention. There's a very simple workaround for that. Unfortunately, you can only set this when you create a table space. Don't set too low uniform extension sizes. So like 128 or 256K, that may get you in trouble, especially in combination with a large DB block size. So be aware of that. But overall, extended Varchar 2, cool feature, can give you a lot of benefit. And as I said before, it's standard in the cloud already. So feel free to use it, oldie but goodie.